So I'm going to challenge Charles to do what he um, proposed he could do. And that is in 10 minutes, in 10 minutes, he is going to show us how to go from centralized, like a fairly serious centralized industrial workflow to uh, making it federated. And since we're right on time, uh, you only got 10 minutes. So I'll catch you right up at Perfect. 10, but I'm sure you can make it uh, starting now. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, I have not too much time to lose, so let's get started. Um, I think we can skip the introduction. I'm working for Flower Labs. I'm a student at TPFL in Switzerland. Um, so what I'm going to show is uh, how to get from uh, such a... Um, such a scenario where you have multiple servers around uh, the world distributed uh, and each server is going to hold data and it's going to have to send data to a central server in order to run a training task. And we will transform this into um, a federated learning setting where uh, each server is going to, uh, each client uh, is going to uh, keep his, its data and train locally, and then only send the weights back to the server. So to do that, uh, I will actually set up three machines uh, using AWS. Uh, so two of them will act as clients and one as server, and I will then connect through SSH to the different machines. So I guess uh, I can already just... So I'm not going to th go through all the configuration uh, in AWS. But, oh, maybe I can make it this larger. So we're going to use uh, EC2 machines. I don't know if this is very visible. And once you select the uh, EC2 um, machines, you'll end up in the dashboard where we're first going to, oh, wait. We're first going to have to create a new security group to allow for the different uh, devices we're going to create to talk between each other. So this is um, once you select, so I think it's, yeah, create security group, you'll end up here where you'll be able to um, give a name to the group uh, description. And the most important thing is the inbound rules. So we're going to have to allow so uh, a, a TCP uh, connection. So that would be for the 8080 port, which is the default server port. Theoretically, uh, the default flower port. Theoretically, you could use anyone you want. And uh, you can also add a, an SSH role just to be able to connect to the server. And then you can create the, the security group. Uh, this is already done. So then I can go to the next step which was, sorry, um, under instances, you can create new instances. Uh, in this case, in, for the specifics, uh, there's not too many requirements for running this workflow. You can just use a basic Ubuntu machine, um, maybe not the default one. You might want a bit more compute power, so maybe the medium. I think this is the one we used in this uh, tutorial. Um, then create a key pair uh, in order to be able to uh, SSH into the machines and select the correct uh, security group that you just created. And then you have other configurations, but uh, they're not relevant for the Flower tutorial, I guess. So once you've uh, launched your instances, you should have something that looks like this. this. So I launched three instances. One is the Flower server. One is the flower machine, and two are the flower machines. I have them running here. So if I SSH into them, uh, I have no idea if this is the server or uh, which machine is this. But this is the server. Um, and I should have. Wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have to copy the IP addresses. Mm. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so on this one, I can SSH into it. Yeah, perfect. And then this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
okay. Nice. And so uh, I've actually already started the, the machines before. So I had the same IP address and it would be a bit faster. Um, but imagine you have uh, like blank machines. What I did is, so I have a few uh, a few files I wrote. So this is the first one that is supposed to represent the centralized setting where we just uh, create a model. The data is uh, tabular data. It's actually very simple. It's just a uh, basic um, iris data set from uh, scikit-learn. And then the model uh, is a, a, a CNN. So, but this is not what we want to focus on because this is just a centralized case. And so we will assume that each of our machine uh, already has this uh, centralized thing uh, on it with uh, some data. Each of the machine is going to hold a different uh, portion of the data. And then uh, what we'll actually do is write the client. So I was supposed to code it live, but I will uh, cheat and uh, just reverse my uh, um, what I typed in before. So this is just a way uh, for the server to access the parameters of the Flower client. Um, this is, uh, we have to do this because it's a, a PyTorch model. So we have to pass it to the CPU first before accessing it. Um, then uh, this is the evaluation function. So we set the parameters of the local client with the uh, parameters we received from the uh, server. And then we test the model with, with those parameters and we return the loss, the length of the data we used for testing and the accuracy. Then for the fit function, we also set the parameters uh, from the global server. Then we train here for 50 bucks. And then we return the, um, the parameters and also the length of the training set. And this uh, is just a utility function that we use here and here in order to update the uh, model uh, parameters with the uh, parameters we received from the server. So uh, this should be our client. And then we have uh, in the main function, this is just so we can pass the address as uh, an argument to our start numpy client function. Um, so that's our client done. And what you can do to transfer it to your uh, uh, machine. So that's not the correct command. That would be for sending the server. Um, I guess, um, oh yeah, sorry about that, I guess we can, so I just sent uh, the client file to the first client, and then I can use, so SCP is just uh, a way to copy through SSH. Um, yeah, so this is the second client. I'm sending the file now. And then for the server, this is also going to be pretty basic. Uh, we use the start, uh, start server function uh, with uh, so this address in order to be able to access it from other um, devices. Um, the config is just for three rounds. We use FedAverage with uh, this evaluation metric segregation function in order to have uh, an aggregated uh, accuracy uh, between the different clients. And we can also send this to our server uh, here. Okay, and so now all our machines should have the correct files. Okay, and I can probably um, wait. Uh, if I show you, um, yeah, so on this one, uh, just for the sake of the example, we can run the centralized um, workflow. Oh, I might want to increase the font size. And so here we have the results. I'm not sure if this is even readable. Okay, good. Um, so those are the centralized results. I'm quickly going to modify this 
so it doesn't run an import. Yeah, nice. And then we can just start our federated workflow. So on the server uh, machine, we just start the server. And then on the client machines, we can start the clients. Oh, yeah, I, need, I guess I need to uh, give the address of the server, which was this one. So I can just pass it an, as an argument. And uh, I should also add the port. And this is the same for this client. And so now both clients should connect. And I, actually, the training is pretty quick because the data is very, I think it's only uh, 150 samples between the two uh, clients. And we also have a very high accuracy because it's quite a trivial task, but this is not really what I wanted to showcase. The idea was just uh, to show how easy it could be to take an existing uh, centralized um, workflow and to federate it, and also to um, specify some settings with uh, AWS. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's it. Um, I don't know if that was 10 minutes. I think it was a bit more and I cheated, but uh, you, you get the idea. And especially without the AWS setup, uh, it might be possible to do it in 10 minutes while coding. Yeah. Well, I've got uh, <laughs> 10 minutes and 50 seconds. Oh, so you, you cheated a bit. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Um, yeah, I guess we could take one or two questions. I'm sure people want to go, but um, yeah. yeah, anything? <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't go too much into detail, so yeah. I guess. <laughs> no, anything? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm just curious about okay. I think y'all said you were going to publish some AWS like files to say, hey, this is how you deploy. But yeah, I'm curious about the setup to say, hey, you know, I have a set of IoT devices. I have an AD AWS. How do I set that up to make a server from that? So I'm just curious how, how easy that was, knowing that you kind of flew through it. But it seems like it's pretty yeah. straightforward. Well, uh, I think we can even make it easier by providing some, so for instance, I showed some of the configuration for the security group uh, and for the instances. I think this is something that you can automate through a template file on AWS, and that would be quite a nice end goal to, to have in mind. Um, but this is not currently something that uh, we can provide, but uh, yeah. But but your code for this is all available, going to be available. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. definitely put everything online afterwards, and ideally also provide a set of documentations for for all the uh, all those uh, tutorials we presented during the summit. Uh, thanks for the tutorial, Charles. Uh, question: uh, Are you planning to integrate uh, with uh, the uh, Nitro? I think uh, enclaves from. Uh, AWS or the device device firms. I'm not. I'm not sure how they call it, but it's like essentially phones that they have uh, in order to be able to benchmark essentially device capabilities. Oh, so like a, a right. form that in like programming the infrastructure or yeah, like as a as a as a form of deployment in order to benchmark like the actual uh, deployment. Okay. How 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 it well, behaves. Tanner is more suited to answer this one, apparently. So. I can just comment on that, which is we have some users which use, for example, AWS device farm to right. uh, start like a lot of devices to mm -hmm. um, yeah simulate um, setups. So going forward, we'll probably provide CloudFormation, Terraform kind of uh, yeah scripts, templates, which will make it easier to, to just Perfect. get started. Great. Awesome. Thanks. Great. Uh, let's thank uh, Charles again.